Welcome back to the Investor Unite podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. If you are looking to ignite your real estate investing, then join us at Investors Unite. Introduction. <laughs> yeah, so guys, it's just us today. We realized that we never really introduce ourselves with like previous episodes. So for you guys that don't know who I am, my name is Stephanie Kabidi. We're located out in Harrisburg, PA. We're real, I'm a real estate agent and a real estate investor. Just Flash that here. agent's license. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't really use the agent license too much, but yeah, just out here. If you need help selling though. Yeah, if you need help selling, let me know. She might be a listening agent for you. <laughs> um, I am Skylar Plotz. I I'm just a dude, for real. What do you do? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually still work my nine to five job. I am from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania as well. We graduated together from high school, uh, first jobs together, stuff like that. And we are both now real estate investors. Yep, I don't business have my partners. Yeah, I don't have my uh, license though, just to clarify. Yeah. But on today's episode, it's going to get a little juicy. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our bank account. Yeah, it's not looking too good. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's a little empty for real. I actually want to like. So let's, let's take it back a little bit. Let's, yeah. from the very beginning. How much how much did you have to start investing oh shoot like starting so, from me being an agent or like from investing or right so company. your story was you went to college for like a week said f this i'm out of here yeah and then you worked a little warehouse job for a little bit yeah if i'm correct and then you decided to get your agent's license you had the youtube thing going on the side right so i'm wondering once you let's say once you acquired your agent's license mm -hmm. kind of like where did you stand financially like did you have a savings or reserve saved up to live off of did you... no i had no savings i i barely had any money probably like my parents paid for my education for real estate okay so i don't know maybe like 500 to 900 dollars, like super low and then i would make money from youtube sometimes it was like as high as 800 dollars a month Sometimes, like right now, it's super low of like 150 to like $200 a month. I don't know why hey, it's so much lower, but. You're making money off of YouTube. I don't know anyone else yeah, I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> at least personally. But yeah, that's what I started with as an agent and then um, started getting deals and stuff like that. So, you know, okay. started making little some little money. Yep, yep. And then as an investor, once we partnered up, I think I had like maybe over 7K in savings. That's not bad. Maybe like. Cause we were kind of close to where we were at, and I, yeah, we were. We were so. like right around like ten thousand each. Cause yeah. I remember when we first started talking to the one private money lender from like King of Prussia area. That guy, he was like, "Well, how much do you guys have now?" We're yeah. like, "Oh shit, like seven. I think we both like bumped it up to like ten thousand to seven, yeah, sound better. But like we were that. around like seven or so. Yeah, so that's where I was around like yeah. seven or ten k in savings, and then probably like two k or something in checkings okay. or something like that. I don't okay. know. And this is a very like kind of personal video this so is, yeah, if, we're if i to... if i ask you anything that's like all right skylar like calm the fuck down like, Same, just tell me just tell me all right you know i'm an open book like i don't care <laughs> but like i know um so for me uh yeah like you said like pretty much around the same after well at college i went broke mm -hmm. like dead broke and then that's when i got into the whole uh everything that we discussed on an earlier podcast go watch it yeah and uh, <clears throat> eventually i believe by the time i left college I had roughly around two, like twenty two hundred dollars. Still not much at all. Yeah. And then, <laughs> little funny backstory is my grandma, mm -hmm. and well, yeah, it was actually just grandma. I was gonna say grandparents, but it wasn't. Pop pop. Anyways, so they bought me a bunch of savings bonds when I was a kid, right? Yeah. And she would like go through and like run me through my finances like as a child, and she would teach me about like these savings bonds. They take time to reach full maturity and some other information. I don't really remember to yeah. be honest. And there was a point where after college, I had moved in with my girlfriend at the time and didn't have a job yet. Still trying to figure out like kind of what I wanted to do. I was still like in that like mindset of just like having fun, partying, hanging out with friends. Like I was just happy to be home from college. And then like, yeah, like three months later, I look at my bank account. Well, actually, I go to McDonald's one day <laughs> and I try to order a bundle box. Yeah. So your card got declined at McDonald's. Yo, that's the worst. Oh, I said, for real. <laughs> Not at McDonald's. <laughs> oh, nice ass manager gave me the bundle box for free. Oh, so I was very happy. Shout out to him. Still on my girlfriend. Uh, him. Okay. Still on my girlfriend in the, like, 
in the car at the time and yeah that was very open like she knew where i stood financially so she looked at me after that she was like you gotta get a job mm -hmm. i'm like nah i'm cashing those saving bonds because <laughs> <laughs> still had that mindset of like nah i'm just gonna go into real estate i don't want a job at all like yeah. ever just kind of mindset kind of wrong at the time to have so i go and i collect these savings bonds for my grandma and then she is pissed off with me she was like you don't need these like let these mature she was like only a couple of mature like going yeah. off of me i'm like grandma i need it like my bank account's negative I, I need money yeah and um so i take these savings bonds and i go to my bank the next day and i go to like check them because you can't tell on the actual bond i believe like when it reaches full maturity mm -hmm. um because i know some of them have but some still had like five years some still had like 10 years so how much is it like <clears throat> exactly the so well so i i don't know the total amount to be honest they were like 50 dollars bonds and i think once they reached full maturity maybe it was like 100 bucks per oh, bond or okay. something like that. oh i thought it was something more like crazy no i believe i honestly don't know too much about savings bonds because yeah, like, no one that. really uses those anymore to be honest mm -hmm. and grandparents maybe um do it for your grandchildren though that's a nice tip yeah but yeah so i take them to the bank and like i'm telling the teller i'm like listen i don't know which ones are mature and which ones aren't but they have the capability of checking i was like can you please check this to see like which ones are mature the ones that are fully matured i'd like to cash out the ones that aren't matured yet i don't want to cash out yeah so she was like all right just go sit down at my desk over there i'll bring it over to you and like let you know what's going on she comes back and pile of cash it wasn't a lot to be honest it was like 2800 bucks mm -hmm. and she was like all right it's all yours just sign all these slips and everything i'm like well, where's the ones that are mature she was like what i was like the ones that are mature i just told you like i only want the ones that are mature to be cashed out the other ones i still want to leave as a bond so they right. have more time to mature she was like oh my god like i'm so sorry i cashed all of them oh, i was my like goodness. grandma's going to freaking kill me bro yeah. like i was like we had just had a whole conversation about this like five minutes ago how did you f this up so badly what, so what did your grandma say um i don't think i ever told her uh, to be honest she don't know till this day I, I still, yeah. she's gonna know now <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah well she don't even got internet so she can't watch oh, youtube dang. we're all good <laughs> uh yeah that was just like funny and so yeah i ended up like walking with like 2800 bucks shortly after that i got a job at target with the girlfriend yeah and worked there for a little over two years uh throughout that time frame i believe it was like right after target is kind of when we started to uh partner back up or not right. partner back up but started to become part communicate a little bit yeah um yeah like during that whole middletown property era kind of thing and uh, yeah i think from the time of like two years of working at target i wasn't the biggest best investment saver dude like i had a 401k with like actually i still have never cashed out that 401k or moved it to a Roth IRA or anything i still gotta figure that out yeah being a lazy dumbass but at that time i think yeah i sat right around between like seven to ten thousand somewhere in that range when we first start yeah partnered up yeah so combined we had like twenty thousand. yeah on the high end and i don't like, even know so like <clears throat> when we uh had our first bank account like our business bank account i don't know how much we even added probably the bare minimum <laughs> yeah well i don't know if it was like 2k each if we both added that or something right so in this video i kind of want to go over and ex discuss like all the overhead that you can expect when starting a wholesaling company or yeah. just an investment company in general um which you were already using a couple of these platforms for your agents license right uh stuff that i was all new to i didn't really have any idea of what you were paying on a monthly basis for these platforms to mm -hmm. you know run a company so if you want to touch base on that maybe a little bit like which platforms did you use for your agents versus like what we use now for investing and kind of like why we transitioned maybe yeah. Something along those lines, like maybe some platforms that we might have added over the time. So I think like the main thing for agent stuff is dot loop, which is like just for electronic signatures where like okay. I'll send it out like a contract or we say agreement. Yeah. Um, send an agreement out to, you know, have a seller sign or a buyer sign. And now then, can you just use DocuSign? Yeah, free? you can use that. I just don't like it. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I think dot loop may be like I don't know if it's like 19 it's below 30 dollars a month i believe it's so not too bad so i still use that like i'll use that for our wholesaling business flipping business so on and so forth but i'll also use it time and here and there whenever i would do agent stuff yeah but um cold calling i mean i used to use like mojo dialer I said, when we first started we used mojo yeah, yeah but now i mean i don't call as an agent anymore right we just call as investors so we use Batch Styler, which is like 
ours is like five something a month, 500 a month. 500 something a month. Yeah. That's because we do have an extra user with a pretty substantial amount of phone numbers. And... Yeah. So it gets a right. little pricey. It does. And now, what would be your main reason from switching from Mojo to Batch Dialer? Um, I don't know. The like, I like how they have the numbers. Like, you can change if it becomes spam. Um, you can also use multiple line dialers, which I you can with Mojo, but I don't think it goes up to ten. Oh, Batch goes up to ten. I believe so. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we usually we, use we a max of four. ten. Yeah, we don't use ten right. just because. You're going to miss out on so many Your leads. contact rate's going to be lower. Yeah. For sure, yeah. So, I mean, there's that. I used to use constant contacts to do a weekly email as an agent. That was like 40-something a month. But I completely stopped too. that, so I don't even use that. <clears throat> okay. So, I mean, it's going to vary between being an agent and being an investor. Right. There's going to be a lot of different things. But, like, this is kind of more geared towards, like, investment stuff. So, like, when we it's first all- started our company, we had to get that LLC Yep. And that LLC probably ran us like eight fifty maybe, yeah. which you can get a cheaper one. We just were like, let's yeah. go through an attorney. Let's have this, you know, all legit. We don't want to make any mistakes. Right. Make sure the operating agreement is correct and everything like that. So that's why it cost a little bit more. Um, after that, what we... What are some alternatives to creating an LLC versus going through a attorney? I mean, you can go and create it yourself right. at the courthouse. Okay. You can also just do it online, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know too. I never done it online before, so. Okay. I got you. So what else? So after the LLC, we also. Um, I'm trying to think. This was what three years, two years ago. Two, well, <laughs> two years probably. Oh. Um, two years, something like that. We created the logo. The logo was like what seventy dollars or so. Yeah. Wasn't too bad. You can just get a logo off of Fiverr.com. Have someone make it. Um, website we got a website which is like $69 a month I know that Um, yeah carrot carrot carrot.com if you're ever looking to get a website just check out carrot.com just running through we I mean we just went through our taxes so we kind of know what we were paying for there's a lot in there now yeah (laughs) right so let's uh let's skip ahead a little bit right Mm -hmm. so now we I know this is the boring stuff yeah so now now we're investors and our bank accounts are lower than they ever have been. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, let's let's get on this topic. You got a full time job. I do. I've been broke since. Man, I think it hit me June of uh, last year, June twenty three. Yeah. Yo, so, it was bad. Last time, like we really paid ourselves was from the Granville property, I believe. Yeah. Shh, when did that close? Do you remember? That was February of last year. But it didn't hit me. It was until, February of last year? Yeah. Holy it didn't hit me until, though, June because um, it was something going on. And, like, I literally, I took a screenshot because I know this would be a good story to tell and stuff. Yeah. I think I had, like, below $10 in my account. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad, and I was so stressed. Like, anything would bother me. Like, I would get so irritated so fast. Mm-hmm. And then this one time, my dad made me late for an appointment out in Philly, and I got so upset because I was like, I got to get on this appointment. I got to make money yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I was just, I had it just because when you have, you're broke. I mean, like, you broke. Yeah. yeah it's not and I stressful. felt it. I really felt it. But then as time, you know, started to go on, I was like, I just realized God was like, this is just all a part of the journey. This is all a part of the story because no one's going to want to hear everyone you know, a story where everyone's just making all these wins and all yeah, these like my Ws. first month, I made 100000 My second yeah, it's like, yeah. first okay, year, I made a million. Good for you, you know, making all that money. But yeah. I want to hear stories of people at their lowest and now That's making right. millions and, like, how they got out of that lowest point right. to now where they are now. Just, like, some of the biggest influencers out there. I mean, Alex yeah. Ramosia, for an example, he went from pretty dead broke to... I think hitting his first million and then like a year later losing all of it, yeah. getting it all back. And I think he lost it one more time even before yeah, he was yeah. doing like the brick and mortar stuff. And I don't know all the details of his story. Him, Very like, inspirational though. Go watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Alex is great. And like Wes Watson, mm-hmm. like I watch a lot of his stuff and um, also uh, Wallow267, like they talk about how they were in the penitentiary, like in jail for a long amount of time. 
and then now they're out here making millions like from that yeah. within a couple of years <clears throat> like that's just so even, inspirational even grant cardone himself was like a drug addict that until like the age of 27 or something yeah right and now he's a multi-billionaire like, yeah it's crazy. crazy it is crazy but so oh go ahead no i was just gonna say going back to so like so now i work a nine to five yeah. which is completely different story uh, yeah. where you're at um so where i stand financially because of that is a majority of our expenses that we threw back into the company i would say i was able to cover through my nine to five income mm -hmm. and the money that we generated from our real estate deals would typically just go to my savings account so my savings account got put built up pretty substantially i mean yeah. nothing crazy but like a decent amount right and I've just been using anything that we had to pay out of our own pockets just from my checkings account on those biweekly paychecks from my nine to five. Mm -hmm. um, my nine to five is a typical schedule, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 2.30. So that still gives me the entire afternoon of Monday through Friday and then all of sun Saturday, Sunday to, you know, work on the company. Yeah. Um, which obviously don't like having to spend money out of our pockets to put back into the company. But in the beginning, it's like, this is something we have to do, right? Yeah, and, and it didn't start like that. Like, we, we Oh, it added, did. It started, well, yeah, yeah, it, it started, started like, like that. that. But, like, we then didn't we, have to after we did that, like, initial, because we started getting deals. Right. But then it hit us when <laughs> so, it hit us hard. It is. Slap me. So, um, yeah, no, after, you're right. As soon as we hit our first deal, first couple deals, we were able to fund the entire company off of those deals and mm -hmm. no longer had to pull money out of our pockets. And then um, our transition from kind of more of a wholesaling, like we were doing, I'd say, more substantial numbers on terms of like reach out, lead generation, mm -hmm. um, the amount of VAs we even had at the time is higher than we do now. The amount of calls that we were getting, um, we then added other platforms such as SMS. Like we had a launch control. Yeah, uh, we that tried. Was like another, that was like 500 basically. Well, we tried REI reply first, but yeah. we didn't have the best success rate with that. So then we switched to launch control. Got one amazing deal from it, and now we just need to completely cut that. Yeah, so I mean we stopped it. We yeah, we already did. It. But yeah, <clears throat> there's a good reason for that. Um, where was I going with this? So you What was I saying? So with <laughs> So all right, so now we're at a point <laughs> we're at a point where like um we're back to like funding the business out of our pockets. Pretty, yeah. Pretty much where we're at right now. Yeah. And I'd say over the time we have acquired a substantial amount of equity because we did start buying those rental properties. Mm -hmm. But if you guys listen to the last podcast two podcasts ago with Judah Hoover he said a quote that kind of stuck in my head, um, whereas equity doesn't pay the bills, right? It's true. And that's kind of like our reality at the moment, for sure. Yeah. I don't like to speak this, but it's like, um, I think Cody Davis said it, like, you're um, cash poor, but rich in equity, something like that. Yeah. yeah. There's another one, too. It was uh, equity comes, equity goes, but the cash will always flow. Yeah. Right? So it's like, I know a lot of these bigger investors, they have very mixed opinions on whether you are you should be investing for cash flow or you should be investing in equity. And that's all going to be determined off of your market. And, yeah. You know, I want cash flow. <laughs> uh, right now we want cash flow for yeah. sure. Maybe later. Well, I'm sure we'll always want cash flow for real. Yeah. Equity is nice. Like you can say, hey, my uh, my net worth is $500,000, but it's not liquid. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, cool. What are you going to do about it? It's like, yeah. nah, damn. <laughs> I just spit everywhere. I saw it. Like, what's that called? I glee. It didn't get on me, so I'm chill. No, it went that way. Sorry about your mic. <laughs> I'll wipe it down later. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, we're honestly just being transparent about, like. Right. So we did acquire these rental properties. Yeah. And are they cash flowing? Are they cash positive? Yeah, our, um, our two unit. Our two units. So we did refinance. Our one two unit. You know, we have multiple two units. The first one. Yeah, the so. first one's cash flowing. Now our, psh, man, it just made me think of all them bills we had to pay. Oh, yeah. We dropped like. Like uh, five grand <laughs> on bills. We dropped five Monday. grand in one day. Well, no, it was last Monday. <laughs> on <bills>. Okay. <laughs> so honestly, I feel like we're not cash flowing at all right now. <laughs> like it's so bad. It feels that way. The but The city doesn't tell you about all these bills you have to pay. So it's like all hidden and like. They just hit you with a giant pay man. Not paycheck, but a not an invoice either i don't even know what a bill yeah it was some, giant like bill. you didn't even get them in the in the mail like 
we had to literally search. I was like just messing around with the like going their through the portal. city's website. Yeah. Yeah, just to see like hey, like, let, oh, let's owe, look at this. We owe one hundred and seventy four dollars there. Yeah. Oh, we were oh twenty two hundred dollars here. I'm like, what even is this? Yeah, literally. Yeah. That was crazy. So definitely explore your city's like hidden yeah, fees. Yeah, check the check because that's really gonna determine your cash flow because. On a surface level sh spreadsheet, it looks like, okay, well, here's our expense report versus mm -hmm. here's our gross income. Subtract that. There's your net income. Right? Yeah. No. No, it's not. Yeah. I'd like to think it is. Once you uh, get all those other fees like figured out and you realize you have to pay those, then obviously you can calculate that into your net income and whatnot. And yeah. Have more accurate numbers, I would say. Um, but we, yeah, first rental property, we don't really know about any of that. And we haven't really heard it from any other mentor or investor in the area. So it's yeah. like, it was a good piece of information. Just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're still learning every day where I still like to classify us as like new investors because we have so much to learn. I mean, we know we learn so much, but yeah. like we still have a long way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as of uh, I don't even want to get there yet. Now nah, let's talk about credit card debt. <clears throat> okay. So, so you <laughs> you decide to explore the realm of credit cards like pretty early on and yeah. build up a pretty what's that called? Um, the credit line. Credit line. Yeah. Go. So no, my credit line, credit line is. Line. Yeah, I have a good good credit line. One card is like seventeen k. Another card is eight, and then another card is like five. I think it's a little over five. Mm -hmm. So what's that? Was well, 17, 8, and 5, so 23 to 31. Yeah, yeah, around that. And, I mean, it's great to build your credit line because you can use that money to fund, you know, and buy uh, properties, whether that's, like, using that as an earnest money deposit, doing a, um, what is that called? Um, when you go to the bank to a cash uh -oh. advance, doing a cash advance yeah. to get money to, you know, even use it for closing calls if need be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's great. We, I haven't done it with my personal money. Personal money, we did it with like our business, business card, credit. Uh, credit card. But yeah, so like with me not having, um, like this being my full-time job of just real estate investing and then um, agent stuff a little bit here and there, but literally what you focus on expands. So I'm like fully 100% focused on the investing stuff because I like we need this. Like yeah. this is this is our plan A. We don't got a plan B, <laughs> you know? Oh, so kind of. Plan B is like, well, eh, no, you're right. Not, investing, as, investing as a whole is the plan. Plan A, yeah. I was going to break it down, but it's not even worth it. Yeah, so so I was like, we, we need this to work. Um, so that's why I'm fully invested in, like, just 24-7 on the mm -hmm. business. Don't have any other pay, you know, just from YouTube and stuff. So that's when June, when it hit me, I'm broke. So I'm like, all right, I can still use my credit cards and stuff. Cause I still gotta live. Like yeah. I'm saving money from rent, cause I don't have to pay rent. I'm still in the basement so of at my this parents' point, house. Are you using more money on your credit card than you have in your bank account? Yeah, and it's horrible. Yeah. Well, so I have to pay like the minimum yeah, on my no, stuff. Man, we're getting personal. But it's okay. Whatever yeah. you want to say. Like I'll I'll go through my expense report after. It's all know. part of the story, so it's all part of the testimony. So I'm just like being transparent. Yeah. But um, yeah. So like just having to. And like, there's the time where I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can pay my minimum. Yeah. Like it gets so scary it's where- like I'm down to five bucks. It yo. gets dark, <laughs> yo, <laughs> pretty bad. So I would, um, what I did is I was like, okay, I know I make money from TikTok. Let me check how much I make from TikTok. Cash even, that out. Yeah, cash <laughs> everything out. I said, okay, let me check my cash app. I don't even do like the wait three days. <laughs> like that instant. Give it, give it, give it. I need it instantly. <laughs> I don't care about to pay a couple of cents or something. Yeah. Like I was trying to find everything. Check my Facebook. Venmo, Did I make PayPal, any money from Facebook? Like Literally anything and everything. Yeah. So pennies in the couch. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> pennies in the right, couch. Right, right. So yeah, it gets tough. Like everyone thinks being a real estate investor is like oh sunshine and rainbows, but it's, no, like it gets dark. We're like, it does. You literally have to have that strong mindset. You have to be so grounded and it's just. Like, all right, I'm broke. Let's get to work. Yeah, you yeah. have to just push through. Like, it's going to be tough spots where you're at, but you just have to, you know, keep going because there's that light at the end of the tunnel. Right. No, absolutely. And I'm sure, like, from a lot of our videos, people have gathered that we've probably acquired a good amount of money just from everything that we do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 
on a basic level, I'm sure it looks like that. It's like, hey, we're at nine doors in total, mm -hmm. soon to be 13. That's kind of exciting. We'll go into yeah. that later on, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you see that and you're like, oh, these people are making money. They're buying good deals. Like, we've gone over a pretty deep analysis on our rental properties. So it's like, well, they bought it super discounted. Their mortgage is going to be low. Mm -hmm. Their cash flow is pretty darn high just because of the location. Us doing Section 8. Everything sounds like, you know. It sounds amazing. It sound, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you go into, like, the actual cost of running a business like this. And it's it's heavy. Like, yeah. There's there's a lot behind it. I mean, just primarily, I would say a majority of our expenses. Well, I, um, we'll go into that separately. A majority of it is just from our overhead of like the software programs that we use. Mm -hmm. Um, so. And it gets scary sometimes where it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even. We don't know if we have enough money to pay our employees and stuff, and yeah. we always make sure they get paid first. That's all that matters, you know, because right. they got. They, they got their papers. families and stuff. Of you know? course, yeah. Um, what I was going to say is that another thing that you don't really take into account is kind of time frame along with uh, rehab budgets when you are doing these fix and flips or innovations or buying these rental properties, executing a burst strategy. It's like mm -hmm. rarely ever will you get it done on time within budget. It's like it's almost just not reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you can have like such a, a set goal and – there's just always something that's bound to go wrong, which yeah. it's just something you have to, you know, just take into account. Like, don't get pissed off over it. Don't, like, throw a fit and yell at your contractors or get mad at it your business happens. partner. Your bank accounts are both empty and negative. And it's just like, okay, this is a time that I could go absolutely freaking crazy and just, like, rip somebody's head off. Mm -hmm. What's that going to do for anybody, right? Yeah. Not a damn thing. You got so like, to learn to control your emotions. Yeah. That's been, like, a big thing, like, in business. If you can't. You ain't this making business it. is not for you. <laughs> you ain't making it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Um, and as of now, like going back to the kind of the nine to five thing is where it's like I have actually taken. So how I explained earlier, how I saved up a good amount of the money from the deals that we've done. Um, right. Like wholesale innovations, flips, all that stuff. Yep. Like I've been able to save that money and just continuously use my personal income for, you know, my personal expenses yeah. along with just like fun and like anytime I have to throw money into the business like it's always been like okay like here like here and before it was like never like accounted to the point where it was like payback right yeah until recently because we started to go down pretty bad it was pretty ba it, it's had, pretty bad <laughs> it is pretty bad we've had some expenses where it's just like okay well we want to do the refinance I know that we'll get a large lump sum, lump sum of money from that and we have taxes coming up where we should get a good month amount back from that as and well the, and the thing about refinance is we have to make sure our credit is solid and the downside is me like having to use my credit card for certain things or like sometimes like i'll right. have to use my credit card for you know to help the company or something then we just split it or whatever the case may be yeah that's when it gets iffy and then we also did the refi recently in december on our two unit which that loan amount hopped on our personal credit which even affected our credit score again unexpected. so now it's like they go with the lowest credit score so it gets <clears throat> gets a little bad because like they go with the lowest one yeah oh, that's not good. i know we gotta, get, we gotta get your credit back i up. know so like <laughs> it gets bad so like we have to make sure like okay we have the funds number two we have because we need funds for the appraisal mm -hmm. but um also good credit so we have a good rate i mean it's nice that rates are gonna eventually go down but still we want to make sure we're solid yeah no absolutely and what I was getting back to is that, like, over the past, I don't know, maybe like, four, three, three months, four months, like, I've been taking I my... think you started, like, you started in January. Okay. Oh, yeah. so not even that long. I don't think that long, Man, yeah. flew through a lot of money in that time. Yeah, I think it, it, it was fast. It yeah. was really fast. That's because we did have to... Interest payments. Interest payments, and we had to do the last unit of our five-unit building, which that was a pretty substantial Like amount. 10K. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, And yeah, so that's been, like, all coming out of my savings. So now it's, like, 22-something 20, thousand dollars. Yo, I've, yeah, I've been feeling, like, I've been feeling that broke way since like i said june yeah but now it's like kidding you. it's just him me yo honestly we need to talk about like doing the club <laughs> yeah honestly um th that's the other thing is like credit cards though like i hate to have a credit card payment yeah at all it's horrible and i don't know it's just like something that i've like been able to avoid this entire time whereas yeah. now it's like 
okay, I can only afford the minimum balance. And it's like, yeah. is that going to make my credit shoot down even more? Will it be okay if I do pay the minimum? Like, I don't know, actually. Do you know? I think it's as long as you're making your payment, the minimum, That's fine. you should be chilling. Okay, because I've always been told, like, pay off the entire lump sum amount as soon as yeah, you mean, can, right? Utilization rate, if you're utilizing more than 30, 30%, that's where, like, it's hurting me. Right. But, um, yeah, if you're utilizing only, like, 10% or so, you're chilling. I'm more than 10 then because yeah, my uh, my credit line is only two thousand. Oh dang! Right, so I'm oh, gonna like, geez. after today's purchase at Home Depot, <laughs> I think it's like it's at a thousand bucks, a little over a thousand, something like that. Dang, you're kind of close. I'm at like fifty something percent right now. <laughs> you? Did you check your credit? No. <laughs> <laughs> after the uh, episode, I don't want to. <laughs> so how are you feeling? Because I know on Friday when. You're like, oh, hey, I was, how are you? I was like, dude, ah, I'm doing pretty good. What are you I was doing? Stressing. You, yeah. I was stressed out. I don't know. Cause like, you didn't come to the office. Cause I was out. I was over here working. I was, and then you, you were like, oh, I'm, I'm took a run or something. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I already know he's stressed. I was. <laughs> yeah. So I was at work and I was just like going through everything that we have to pay like this upcoming week, two weeks, something. I was like, oh, yeah. look, looking at my account. I was like. I don't know how I can afford this one. I was like, I've been able to get us out of every pickle so far. Yeah. But it's to the point I can't get us out. And mm -hmm. I was like, fuck, like, what do we do? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to take out more credit cards. I don't want to go into yeah. further debt. with Because then it just ruins the credit. School. Exactly. So it's like, all right, well, let's get back to work. So yeah. <laughs> so we do have a, a couple things. That, well, to be completely honest, dead broke right now. We're so broke. Dead broke. And, we, and last <laughs> night. Literally, I got the notification last night at like 11 o'clock. Um, the sellers signed the agreement for us to purchase a four-unit <laughs> yeah, four property. We still need a $1,000 earnest money deposit now. So, yeah, it's we like, put down $1,000. There's that extra 1000 in my credit card. <laughs> you don't even got a 1000 What are you talking about? Yeah, it's like 900 maybe. Yeah, so we'll I out. like this stuff. Like if It's not pretty, but it's our, just... If, Let's say if someone else was in our position, they could be stressed. They probably like, be going they could crazy. Be pulling their hair out, but like, we're, I'm just like, hey, it's another, yeah, like, another day, another million, and you know? another day, <laughs> and that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like, yeah, what you were saying though, the other day, like, I am not a person to get stressed, like at all. I'm such like a relaxed motherfucker. Like, I yeah. could care less. Things go wrong, it'll get fixed eventually. Yeah. Like, we'll we'll figure it out. Always do. But I don't know. Just Friday. Mm -hmm. I think it was Friday. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. It was Friday when you... When I was going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I hopped on the phone. I was like, we need to go over expenses now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like I went through and like finished. I was at uh, I was at work. Still yeah, work my nine to five yeah. during this time. Oh, still now. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was at work and like I was just going through like everything, like looking at all my accounts, like my spreadsheet. Or not spreadsheet. You're like, do you have a calculator ready? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need to figure this out. Yeah. Um, realize, yeah calculator nothing's gonna save us there mm -hmm. but yeah i got out got home and i was like i need to clear my head like yeah. went straight to wildwood was like i'm booking it that's why i did <laughs> i was like when you said run i was like all right i'm not even gonna bother him yeah, yeah. Just, it was one of those days i was like i need to go because i was gonna text i was like did you make your follow-up calls but i was like no, <laughs> i want to there. No. I jump in that damn <laughs> creek <laughs> swear to god <laughs> but um yeah, you want to always make sure, like, you're you're keeping your mind clear and, like, working out because um, that helps just, on to, like, just clears your mind and stuff like that. Yeah. So go for, for sure. a walk, go for a run. And I know, stuff like, like that. yeah, so that's kind of what I do. I know that you have a very strong connection with God, so I'm sure that he kind of brings you some peace at that, the end of the day. Literally, that's why I have so much peace. Like, yeah. that's why I'm not, I'm not stressed. Like, I know, like, this is all part of his plan. It's going to work out. This is just our testimony, you know, at the end yeah. of the day. So I'm excited to see, like I said, I'm glad. We're going to prevail. We are. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, it's all part of God's plan, you know? God's plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that Drake leak. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can't get coffee, right? Yeah, no, right. Um, so, yeah, we are buying a, another property. Just got our contract. Yeah. We are dead broke. I'm dead broke, but we have a couple wholesales in we the pipeline. We got stuff in the pipeline. We Please. got a, a fix and flip, but that's going to close maybe early, mid-March. Right. So we it's not like, like we can utilize that. Just get that through February. Money. Yeah, like, you know, just get through this week, you know? Or you could use uh, Ed Milet's quote, just one more day. 
one day. Just take it one. Literally, just take it one day at a time. In the Bible, it says you should not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. I think that's like that's Matthew you just six. Like, just pull that out your head like that. Thirty something. It's something in the thirties, but yeah. yeah. That's impressive. You well should not worry. Well done. Just chill. It'll be alright. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, chill and read your Bible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you read your Bible? Um, because you said somewhere. that brought you peace. It did. Like yeah. that one day, like. This wasn't stressed out from the business whatsoever. This it was, was this was else. personal life, right? Yeah. But yeah, I went out of my hammock. I read the Bible that one day, and like mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I had like, uh, I don't, yeah, <laughs> ah, I don't want to say. You don't anything. gotta get too into it. Yeah, but no, it, it honestly did. It just made me feel like way better that yeah. day. Like I was out there for like five, six hours. I fell asleep in the hammock. I had the Bible lay spread on top of me. <laughs> yeah, I just felt nice. like a blanket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was cold. Kept you warm. It got cold out there. <laughs> but no, it was just really nice, honestly. Yeah. So. Continue to exercise. Sometimes just I like nature personally. That's best what I do. I go out in nature all the time. Yeah. The woods. Get sunlight. Yeah. Yeah, sunlight, you know, bare feet on the ground kind of thing. Right? Been looking been looking in the cold plunges. Like I've been doing so much research. Yeah. And <clears throat> I do want to eventually get one once we make money. Yeah. So that's no, gonna for be sure. the next purchase. Right. So do you wanna kinda give them like a ah I want to go over like what our overhead is. I know we don't have the exact numbers on hand. I know that it's going to vary for every company as well. I think we're like, I think we're still around that 2,500. Because we have now have the office now. Oh, maybe we're not. Maybe we're, we're at like 3,500. 3,500. And that's not yeah. including just like our mortgage or. um. No, no, that's not. Dang. Yeah. I didn't include that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No, all right, forty five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps adding right, up. Fifty five hundred. Yeah. And, but um, um, it's up there. So you just gotta make sure you're constantly uh bringing in that income. Yeah. Right. Now, <clears throat> these fuzzy keep floating around. Sorry. I don't know where we uh where else we could really take this. <laughs> yeah, we got like a karate thing over here. Karate. Oh, yeah. I don't even know class going on. And you should like leave crazy. just this little segment of it in the video so everyone can hear what we're dealing with. <laughs> You probably can't. Sounds like that. But, um, yeah. yeah. So we talked about our finances. Um, that's where we're at right now, you know, being super transparent. It's not easy, like we said, but right. just got to keep on pushing and so, everything will all come together. It's true. And we did, there's another thing is make sure you're buying good deals. Like, because mm-hmm. if we bought these deals and we knew that we couldn't refinance out of them and like really get back our money and oh, we cash flow every month. We'd be screwed right now. Yeah. I think that's kind of what's saving me, honestly, because uh-huh. I know that we are going to cash flow off of every one of these deals we bought because we bought them at such a discounted rate. Yeah, I know that's just going to be a matter of time until they are stabilized and we have all the tech or all the units fixed up, yeah. rented out. I know that once we refinance, we have that mortgage on there. Yeah, we're going to cash flow like over a thousand, well, a lot more, way more, a lot than more than that. that, way more. That's just per property is like well over a thousand per yeah. property. Yeah, and our thing, like our whole lives are going to change. Once we do our refinance for our commercial building. <laughs> I hate like, to keep talking about it, but it's so true. Like, yeah, like our lives are really going to change. And I'm nervous because like we got we got our like hopes high with our two unit. When we refinance, we we're like, oh, we're about to make some money off of that. We didn't make, we made 1K. But like, yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we made 1K. So I don't want to get our hopes too high, but still like just from the numbers, we should be like, I'm going to be able to pay off all my credit cards, going to be in a solid position. You're going to be in a solid position where you're going to get paid back all your money that you put into the company, and we're going to be straight. We're going to be... And we're going to quit that nine to five. Yeah. Buy a house hack. So even, even like, say, I know you're, we're not going to be in this position, but, like, say it's, like, bad, like, in May. Like, say where you're at right now in May, like, would you still quit the nine to five? No. No? No, our business will be fucked right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that'd be... You know what's a thought, though, too? Hmm. So, like, do you think if you did quit, like, earlier in the phases of us starting the business, do you think we'd be well farther off since we would have two people full-time? Honestly, no. You don't think so? I don't think so, because I think about it this way. It's like, I know that all the day-to-day tasks you're mm-hmm. capable of handling. Yeah. It's like... I know it's a but lot. We could it's a lot to put on your shoulders too. <clears throat> right, but we don't have. Mm. So uh, it's such like a tricky question because you yeah. never would actually know. But no, because it, like, it, it is tricky have. because it could have. But also, we could be completely. Thank God out of that business. you still have your job because 
we need, you know, the fund and stuff. Right. So there could have been the possibility where, hey, we're both millionaires already. If I were to just dedicate my full time to this investing, yeah. which I definitely plan on doing one day. And I know that we are going to both be millionaires sooner than later. But at the same time, if I were to quit that and let's say we got ourselves in a hole and I didn't have neither one of us really had a way to dig ourselves out. It got to the point where we are maxed out on credit cards. Mm -hmm. We are not capable of paying our employees anymore. We don't have the money to run these software programs anymore to continue calling, to yeah. continue. You'd just be doing DoorDash. Swear. <laughs> Swear I'd be doing DoorDash right now. DoorDash. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's like, it's a give and a take. Like, you could really swing. No hate on DoorDash. So I, I used to do I used DoorDash too. Yeah. yeah. I needed that shit. Yeah. Um, Sorry for cussing. It keeps coming out. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you it's know. life. It's me. Um, I don't cuss though. <clears throat> right, you don't. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nate, how how long are we? Forty one minutes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, sorry again. <laughs> no, we. So, what were you saying though? Oh, I was just saying that either like it could have swung either direction where our business could have completely plummeted and we would have went out of business per yeah, se. Yeah, it's like you. We or just we could know. both be millionaires. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say we're not in the most comfortable spot right now, but but we're per where God wants I, us. I yeah. feel fine. Yeah. Like, I'm not over here, like, stressing, like, not being able to sleep at night. Like, I sleep, no, I sleep, I sleep like, like a baby. baby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I do. <laughs> Honestly, my sleep, like, it'd be tough for me to go to sleep. Not because of stress. I just always have that problem. Yeah. Because my brain constantly goes of, like, new ideas and, like, because so I get hyped for work. That's the thing. I, I wear my body out to exhaustion. Yeah. Like, it's, like, yeah, working the nine to five and then doing real estate and, I do have, like, a pretty substantial friend group, and I still like to have fun. Like, mm -hmm. I enjoy, like, I got girls and, like, you know, things. <laughs> and not, not not a flex or anything, but just straight up. Like, just, I have a lot going on. Like, family time. You got to take Jamil's advice. If you guys didn't see his the advice. last podcast with Jamil, you guys got to check that out. Jamil can't give no advice on that. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. I don't want to hear nothing, bro. <laughs> no, I love Jamil. He was a great guy. And it, some of his advice was definitely good. It was good. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. So, no, so uh, uh, keep going. Keep going. No, so what I was saying is like, yeah, just back to sleep. It's like to the point where I'm no joke getting between three to at max five hours of sleep a night. That's bad. Seven days straight, two years straight, right? I don't know how you do it. And my body's just become accustomed to it. There are definitely are certain days where I'm running off of two hours of sleep mm -hmm. and I feel like a damn zombie like yeah. running around. I'm like caffeine and nicotine to get me through the day. Uh, I thing. need a good seven to eight and I'm solid. Yeah. No, like on my days where I do get to sleep in and sometimes I get mad at you, Steph. Yeah. Because <laughs> I get like one day a week to sleep in usually. It's usually from Saturday to Sunday. <laughs> and usually Sunday morning you're hitting me up about something. And yeah. it's like this is my only day because on that day, I will be able, no joke, I sleep 14 to 16 hours straight because my, yeah, yeah. sometimes my entire body will just like take. Well, look, no, the last the Sunday was because Saturday night I was like, hey, did you want to go to church? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'll probably end well, up going uh, if this girl wants to go too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was right. like, okay, you know, I'll just call him Sunday morning, you know. Cause I thought I'll just drive over. over. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, because you you kind of confirmed Saturday night. I said possibly if she does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right. So I go to pick up Ro. I was like, all right, Ro, let's go get Skylar. We drive. <laughs> was over. Ro in the car with you? Yeah, Ro I came. I thought it was just your fan. So no, we came over. I'm surprised Ro didn't bust in my crib and just drag me out of bed. <laughs> and we even we went to second service, not even first. Yeah, eleven. So this is like I come over at like 10:30 in the morning. I'm knocking on your door. I see your mom peek out. I'm like, eh. <laughs> and then um, the dog just starts going crazy. <laughs> Glenn opens the door. He's like, oh, come on in. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right. It's like, yeah, just here to, you know, see. Well, I called you a couple of times. You never answer. Yeah, I was Which I was like, this is the typical. I knew this is. <laughs> Skyler you know, sleeps. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I was like, all right, maybe Tony will just go right, wake you up or something. Well, yeah. Glenn goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn's my stepdad, by the way. Yeah, and he yeah. comes back up. He's like he's not coming <laughs> i was like well all right at least i'd try hey, you will know what happened i don't know if i told you this you did tell me it did i tell you yeah i yeah. don't know if you want to say it on the pod i don't care yeah so glenn so like i still we both still stay in our parents basements basements yeah. and like my family knows like that's kind of my <laughs> space right i'm a little bit older now like 23 yeah. like i have people coming in and out like i'm very respectful about it make sure doors stay locked and everything else whatnot 
But yeah, so this morning or that Sunday morning, Glenn came downstairs, which is a never a thing that never happens. Never happens. So like I just don't even think about it. Like I'm not worried about it. Dude, I'll tell you, he flips on the lights and like I'm still dead asleep. Yeah. And then I hear him. He's like, Skylar, Skylar. Dude, I look up, me and this girl are butt naked in bed. And I'm just like, bro, he's like comes around the corner, he's like, Stephanie's here. <laughs> <laughs> lost it i was like i i looked i was like i started covering her up i was like hold on pause um and yeah i was like nah glad not nah, i'm not going bro <laughs> tell her no he was like all right he walked back yeah. upstairs he was like he's not going he's not going i was like well all right you know i was not then yeah that was a that was a funny one but, but that wasn't like I don't push you. Like I was like, nah, it was just one night, one one of those days. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, nah, you're very respectful about it. Like yeah. the days I get to sleep in, like I need sometimes those sleep in. Um, yeah, and you're pretty good. Yeah, like it's usually real estate like if related. You, if you want to come, you know. Yeah, come. usually it's real estate related. Like yeah. past couple weekends has been church. Um, mm -hmm. still good. Like I appreciate it. Honestly, yeah. I do. That's something I need to fix. <laughs> need to work on. So I'm down there sinning. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta change that around. Yeah, I do. Maybe I'll throw a Bible on top of her head next. Time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, that's that's going too I'm far. I'm not gonna do that's that. Going that was, too far. That's bad. Sorry. We need a Bible right here. My apologies. <laughs> but um, Nate's gonna beat my butt after this. Yeah, Nate, you gotta get him. Yeah, I know. But um, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm like catching a cramp from laughing. That's because you're talking about. <laughs> right I know, right? But um, Here's my punishment. Yeah, so that's basically. Oh. basically it with our finances where we're at um stay tuned because like great things are gonna happen yeah like over these next couple months things are actually gonna completely drastically change yeah and honestly watching the podcast you probably won't notice a single difference between our emotions i don't think because whether we're broke um, we can't say that we've been rich yet but even while being broke like, you can't really read we're us. still like in a good mood yeah. like we're still happy we're cheerful people yeah yeah. Uh, yeah everything feels cool life goes on might be broke it don't matter but life is good as long as you're hey if you wake up and you're alive like we even so we have daily wins every time we yeah. have our team calls we do daily wins sometimes sometimes you know, one of no... us may say oh we don't have a win but no we truly do have a win which we started you woke that. yeah if you wake up in the morning that's your win that's the win because health because like is you, well you know if one day. of us didn't have like a good day because we'll just hop on and be like i woke up it's yeah. like that counts that's a blessing we'll count it yeah some blessing. people they don't wake up yeah and that's their last day yeah. but if yeah, you're still alive will. that's just a thing where you can realize like god's not done with you yet you got a plan got a purpose yeah. keep on pushing it's true and on that note i think we've pretty much discussed we, about we ran everything through it all so yeah we i mean there's more to talk about but you We're going to leave that for further episodes. <clears throat> so if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I know, like, not a lot of people be transparent with their, their finances. Yeah, like, so we're not really subscribe. ashamed of it. Like, it is yeah. what it is. We're in the predicament we are. But at the same time, at the end of the day, I think we're in a good spot. Yeah. At least in terms of equity. And cash flow will be coming soon. Yeah, we're going to have some more guests on. So, guys, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned. We yeah. have 300 subscribers, so that's super exciting. Thank you, everybody. We're growing. We love it. The goal for this year, like we said, is 10,000. So, we're going to hit it. Keep it going. Keep yeah, going. We'll get some bigger names consistent. on here. The more people hit that subscribe button, the more important people we can get on here that yeah. can teach you better knowledge. Yeah. So, with that being said, we'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Peace.